We collaborate with industry giants like Ari, Red, Canon, and of course, Sony. And today, I'm excited to present two groundbreaking tools for live production. The Sony Burano paired up with the Skahoi RCP Pro. The RCP Pro allows for remote control of cinema cameras over a network, whether they are on a helicopter, a car, or any other remote location. And the key advantage is compact control separated from the physical location of the camera on set. Controlling the Burano is done via a single Ethernet cable going into this port using an IP address, a username, and a password easily found inside the camera's menu. It's nothing like the LANG protocol of previous times. That was simple to wire, but extremely limited. And with this integration, using Sony's public remote SDK, you can control all basic parameters, advanced shutter settings, and manage recording functions in the camera. And this is a perfect workflow across various productions production environments from TV production to movie sets. So in this video, I want to show you how the RCP Pro works with the Burano camera. And I want to show you first the, one of the most wonderful features of the RCP Pro, the joystick. So you see this joystick developed by Skahoi ourselves is able to control the iris as you would expect on the camera. You can see that on the camera over here where we are watching a little uh, unorthodox, the um, multi-viewer or the viewer of the camera. So we can also follow the settings that we are about to adjust. But basically this RCP joystick best in class will have a display on top that shows you the actual uh, aperture of your lens. You also have a ring that you can use to adjust the master black. You can also push it for joystick override and all these standard functions. If you don't know the RCP Pro already, it has a shift key here that will allow you access to like additional layers of things. For instance, you can have multiple cameras on this like hidden camera select on top. You can also access an engineering menu for seeing the IP address of the device, etc. But I will mostly want us to move to the top section of the RCP Pro because up here we have the settings that are exposed by the menu, which are these buttons, even on a second page. So we have nine pages of menu functionality to explore today. I won't get into all of it in the same level of detail, but I want to browse through it so that you have an idea about what we are looking at. And in the home menu, we typically put settings that are most likely to be the ones you want immediate access to. So in this case, you have uh, the base look, you have the uh, white balance, color temperature for the white balance, tint, you have gain mode, broken out, ISO, and the shutter speed. If we move on, you'll see that some of these settings are in fact replicated in the exposure menu as well as the shutter menu. So let's look at exposure for instance. You see the ISO setting is here. It was also on the home screen. We put it at the exact same knob, namely this one. All right. Now looking at exposure, we can see that yes, we can adjust the ISO setting of the camera. We can also choose between low and high uh, base sensitivity. We can choose which gain mode we are working on, whether the manual uh, iris is manual or automatic. Uh, the moment we changed it over to auto, notice how we are receiving feedback from the camera that now the uh, iris has changed to f2.8. We also have ND filters on and off here. You can even hear the motor. And then we have shutter speed. We'll get back to that menu in a moment. We have a zoom if the lens supports zooming. We can do that on the lens. We have focus. Um, that is, uh, of course, also lens dependent. <clears throat> then we have a second page here. We have the uh, image menu. Here you can choose white balance, color temperature, and the base look. There is a number of profiles you can go through here, LUTs, etc. Let's just go back to um, the still or maybe the standard would be fine. Okay, go into action. Now, this is actually pretty cool, especially if you think about a camera like this one being used in a an, an action environment. You don't have easy access to those uh, A1 to 7 buttons you find on, on the camera. So from here, you can actually trigger those via the protocol from the RCP. Again, the workflow where you have this remote control of your camera, which is mounted on some obscure device during a uh, recording session. We have info uh, about various statistics from the camera. And then finally, in this menu, we have playback recording functions, which I cannot show because we don't have a recording 
uh, a memory card in the device today, but they are here available and also very useful, of course, to be able to control on a remote distance. But I want to dive a little bit into the shutter speed section of this one, and that is mostly to show you how we integrate things because we pay attention to details. And one of them, which may just be natural to you, but is actually effort on our part, is when you go between the shutter angle and speed, um, settings and you can follow along on the uh, viewer on the camera here you can see the shutter speed is in this corner so as I'm changing the shutter speed value obviously you can see that is also changing here on the camera if I am changing the angle I am also seeing that value being changed on the viewer of the camera itself of course I do but notice how these values are also changing around. As I'm changing this one, we're actually changing the function of this encoder to operate the other value. Another thing is if you enable shutter ECS, which is like this electronic shutter that is very useful if you're filming something that is blinking and you want to synchronize up with its frequency, then you will notice that now I cannot change this anymore. So this is also indicated in the display. Again, we know this parameter is unavailable, so we will tell you that you cannot set the shutter speed in the normal way. No, you need to use this knob because now it is driven by a different engine inside of the camera. And here you can fine tune it very, very precisely, which is cool, right? Now, let's just turn this one off. We also have slow shutter on and off. We can set the number of slow uh, frames for that shutter and so on. And um, we also, of course, have shutter manual and automatic that we can set over here. So this demonstrates how we are pretty particular about the parameter integration. And we want to give you as close as we can to what we would call a native experience. Namely, that even though Skahoy excels in giving you universal control, our products is not second grade. The integrations we do is not second grade. We are going as far as possible at all to give you a, a native detailed experience where we take into account the particular features and behaviors of a camera. Like, for instance, which parameters are not available in a given mode and we'll show you and block that out for you. That's our ambition. I also want to show you how the UI of the RCP Pro works. And actually, we could have done all of this demonstration in an online environment here, because we do have a perfect replica of the RCP inside. So what are you looking at? This is the web UI of the RCP Pro. So it, it's a perfect simulation or actually replica of what we see. So let me just change this. You see that was changed to, to off here. But if I change it over here, then I'm basically able to simulate that encoder turn to the one on the other side. I can also navigate around in the menus. I can change the shutter speed if I want to. It's just a matter of clicking these uh, arrows in the UI. I can um, uh, even, uh, I think I can even manipulate the uh, iris here. So now I'm actually manipulating the iris, um, the lens of the camera. So even though the joystick is not following along because it's not motorized. So all of that can be done inside of here. Okay, so simulation, this, this is true for anything that you buy from Skahoy. The panel has this UI inside of itself because that IP address up here is in fact the IP address of the RCP Pro. So what is probably more interesting for you would be to go to the home screen. And in this one, this is your setup place. And it is really that simple. As I said in the beginning, you have the Sony Burano added as a device. So you can add other devices, other cameras. You can discover them on your network, et cetera, or just you know, pick them manually. And if you look at the settings, very clear. You have an IP address. There's a port number. There's a username and a password. This is something that comes with your camera. You can set in the menu of the camera, which you can navigate here and, and use um, yeah, the, the camera features to find that. And then all you basically need to do is to select the model. And you can see that with the Sony SDK, we have multiple models that we could choose uh, between. So this also exposes that we have a FX6 in the same series and many more cameras they may come out with in the future would be available in this way. And then you can essentially just uh, add it to the camera selector of the camera. And I just briefly mentioned that hidden behind the shift key, there was like a camera selector hidden up here in the top. And that camera selector would give me access to additional cameras. So if I clicked here and I added another camera, Camera, I would have another camera available under my RCP in that very same way. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on social medias like Facebook, Instagram, X, etc. Write to our sales team, subscribe to our newsletter, and you'll find links to all those good things below in the description.